And for the headlines, weather forecast, Pagasa will halt issuing heat index reports until March 2025. Local news, a demolition team destroyed 181 houses in the vicinity of the 4ID HQ. A Miss or government driver is detained for the fatal hit and run of a CDO resident. A suspected high-value target was apprehended by the PNP in Lano del Sur. Clarex City Mayor's annual report is a setback for Moreno. National News Philippine sailors injured as China boards and intercepts Philippine boats near a union show. Is Bamban Mayor Alice Go's actual name is Wapingo? International News Alleged Filipino Jadis apprehended in New York. Entertainment. Regine Velasquez Alcacid shares tips with Bini during the rehearsal visit. Oji Diaz and co hosts submit a counter affidavit regarding Bay Alonso cyber libel complaint. Sports. At last, Bong Quinto has become a champion once more. Bata pala yun na yung gold ko. Outstanding athletes from NCAA and UAAP honored at awards night. International feature Lord of the Rings actor McKellen hospitalized following stage 4. National feature Philippine edition of the card game Coop released. Trivia What is the process of fog formation? Good morning Philippines, magandang umaga Luzon, ug mayo adlaw Visayas ug Mindanao. Today is Wednesday, June 19, 2024. I am Athalia Pisanya. <music> Weather forecast. Pag-asa will halt issuing heat index reports until March 2025. The Pag-asa has ceased the daily publication of heat index data starting Tuesday. According to a statement issued on that day, Pag-asa attributed this decision to a decrease in areas experiencing dangerously high heat indexes, frequent rain showers and thunderstorms across the country, and the conclusion of the El Nino phenomenon. The focus will not the focus will now shift to providing accurate and timely information on hazards and potential impacts during the rainy season. Daily heat index reports from Pagas Synoptic stations will resume on March 1, 2025, ahead of the dry season. Meanwhile, heat index data from automated weather stations will remain accessible on the Pagasa website to assess areas still experiencing hot weather conditions. Local news. A demolition team destroyed 181 houses in the vicinity of the 4ID headquarters. Contrary to expectations, a systematic and non-confrontational approach characterized the inv involvement of police and soldiers in the demolition of hundreds of homes across two lots designated as military reservations within Camp Edilberto Evangelista home to the 4th Infantry Division, Philippine Army Headquarters in Barangay Pata, Gagayan de Oro City. This followed confirmation by Lieutenant Colonel Evan Vinyas, spokesperson for the Cagayan de Oro City Police Office, that 181 houses were affected by the court-ordered demolition to reclaim the parcels of land. Vinyas emphasized that the police enforced maximum tolerance to prevent tensions among affected residents complying with the court's directive. Earlier, the Supreme Court instructed a lower court to return the lots to military use, 
prompting the demolition order spanning five days, continuing until Saturday as mandated by the court. Approximately 300 more houses remain slated for demolition before government control under the Philippine Army is fully reinstated. A Miss or government driver is detained for the fatal hit and run of CDO resident. A 60-year-old man, Simon Quinquinho of Sitio Bay Bay, Casinglo, Tagulwan, Misamis Oriental, tragically passed away after being hit by a pickup truck driven by Cesar de la Serna Bacan from Barangay Bugo. Bacan is currently detained by the police as both parties strive for an amicable settlement. Tagulwan Police Station Commander Police Captain Rexon Layug reported that Bacan did not notice the victim crossing the highway leading to the accident. Despite being rushed to a local hospital, Quinquinho did not survive. Provincial Governor Peter Senor Pedro Onavia expressed readiness to assist Quinquinho's family with funeral arrangements while ensuring the driver. A provincial government employee receives necessary support. A suspected high-value target was apprehended by the PNP in Lano del Sur. A suspected high-value target was charged for violating the Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 following a joint police operation in Barangay Panang Wao, Lano del Sur. According to the Police Regional Office, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region Director Brigadier General Praxi Tangawon, authorities confiscated approximately 10 grams of suspected shabu with an estimated value of nearly 70,000 pesos from the HVT suspect. Tanga won't express confidence in apprehending more high-value drug suspects to corrupt the illegal drug trade in the region. In recent months, numerous arrests by the PNP and PDEA BARM in Lano del Sur have resulted in the seizure of millions worth of suspected shabu from targeted suspects. Claret City Mayor's annual report is a setback for Moreno. Former City Mayor Oscar Moreno received a failing grade in the incumbent City Mayor Rolando Claric's UIS second annual report for the city, scoring only 3 out of 10. This comes after Moreno's projects during his term were noted to have faced challenges, with over 12% still in progress under the current administration. The report also highlighted some of Moreno's shortcomings, which were included in last week's annual report. On the other hand, Moreno confirmed ongoing consultations with various sectors to determine whether he should run against Uy in the upcoming election. He expressed readiness to lead the projects he initiated, which were allegedly neglected by Clarex. Additionally, Moreno's camp, along with former PVDEC Administrator Pompey Lavinia is preparing to confront Uy's administration. And we interviewed some people in, on the streets and we interviewed them about the early pregnancy and early marriage. So let's watch what was their knowledge or what is their opinion about it. So let's watch this. Uh, pangalan po natin, ma'am? Mm, I am Hazel Grace Motia. Hazel? Hazel. Taga asan po tayo, ma'am? Taga Orokolay, Balulang. Ah, taga Balulang po si ma'am. Bali, sa ngayon po, ma'am, marami na po tayo man, naririnig na mga balita o mga sitwasyon tungkol po sa mga kabataan na nag nagbibigti po. Bali, tanong ko po sa inyo, pabor po ba kayo sa early marriage at saka yung sa early pregnancy? Um, o ano pong pwede po natin ma-share? Uh, personally, di po ako... Uh, di po ako um, ay against po ako sa early marriage and early pregnancy kasi po sa edad na mga kabataan dapat ay nagpuporsige muna sa pag-aaral yung mga dapat nilang alamin muna ay paano sila magkaroon ng magandang kinabukasan like studies then learning things na para sa edad nila hindi po yung ganyang bagay na para po sa mga matatamaan na po yung edad ba. 
Pero halimbawa po, ma'am, sa bali yung ka kasama po niyo kanina, ano pong ba siya? Pinsan? Kapatid, kapatid or Halimbawa po, ma'am, sa kanyang ida, ilang taon na po siya? Uh, 14. 14. At age of 14, may mga fling-fling na po yan. May mga secret admirer. Ano, paano, po, paano po siya mabibigyan ng advice kung halimbawa, one of these, oh, di naman po natin na ano na mangyayari sa kanya. Pero kasi ang mga kabataan ngayon talaga mapupusok. Um, sa kanyang sitwasyon, paano mo po i-handle sa kanya? If magka... Magka-boyfriend siya, ta tapos mangyayari yung hindi hindi dapat mangyari. Um, in case po sa kapatid ko, wala po yung boyfriend. Mas like maganda. ate. <laughs> Pero, hindi naman po namin, ay bilang atin niya, din ko naman po sinasabi na um, pagbabawal sa kanya, kasi sa edad na ganyan, Parang trending na o karamihan ng kabataan talaga ay pumapasok na sa relasyon sa ganyang edad. Pero yung sa akin lang ay nagsisimula kasi ang early marriage at saka early pregnancy sa ganyang bagay. Like bat, mura, um, bata pa siya tapos pumapasok na sa relasyon. As ate, pipigilan talaga o hindi naman sa hinhold mo siya. Pero alam mo naman bilang sa atin na mas nakakatanda sa kanya, alam ko kung anong para sa kanya. At alam ko na hindi po yan yung path ba. Kung papayagan mo siyang papasok dyan sa path na yan, talaga magpapatuloy yan. At saka darating din yung panahon na hindi mo na siya mahuhold. Mas mabuti pa na habang ganyan, kailangan bilang ate o mga magulang, kailangan nating tingnan o ipasok sila sa path na para talaga sa kanila, hindi yung mga ganyang bagay. Pero kung halimbawa, ma, meron po siyang i-open na problema sa iyo, ano pong maging reaction mo kaya? Um, kung may problema siya, first and foremost, bilang isang ate, kailangan ko muna pakinggan. Kasi yan din yung problema ng mga kabataan ngayon. Eh. Mas nag-open sila sa kaibigan nila kaysa sa pamilya nila. Kasi tingin nila na hindi sila papakinggan. Tsaka mostly din kasi ng mga magulang o mga family, hindi pa nga nakakapagsalita yung member nag, nag, na, oh, nag, nag, ano, na nagja-judge na as ate niya, ay, kailan ko munang alamin before mag-judge ako sa kanya, kailan kong alamin kung ano talaga yung problema at saka kung bakit niya yung nagawa. Kasi lahat ng bagay na, na nagagawa natin, may dahilan po yun. At saka intindihin din natin siya kung bakit ganun yung nangyari. Pero dapat kailangan talaga ma'am open sa isa't isa. Oo. Pinaka, yan talaga ang pinaka kailangan sa relasyon bilang isang magkapatid o sa pamilya. Lalo na sa mga magulang. Kasi ang daming bata ngayon na nag, maram, pang, parang nakangiti lang sa harap ng mga magulang. Pero deep inside, kaya nangyayari yung suicide, yung mga ganyang bagay. O naglilin on na lang sila doon sa um, karelasyon nila. Kasi sa family nila, hindi sila open. Like, like halimbawa, ma'am, uh, dumating sa punto na ganun nga. Ganun na yung nangyari. Mm, ganun na nga yung mangyayari. Ay, like sa yung mga barkada, ma'am, mang, mangyayari, mangyayari at mangyayari, pero di kasi natin na iiwasan yung mga barkada rito. Barka, dapat ba nating piliin yung magiging, o kung sinong magiging barkada ng kapatid natin o kamag-anak natin? Para sa akin, ako po talaga personal, hindi po ako barkadista. Pero ang kapatid ko, marami po yung barkada. Pero kung nakikinap, ginawa ko, inobserbaran ko muna yung mga kaibigan niya. At saka nakikita ko naman na uh, yung mga kaibigan niya, talagang dinadala naman sila, nagpupunta naman sila sa lugar kung saan, kasiyahan lang, hindi yung mga ganyang bagay. Pero kung ganyan, kung mapupunta man sa ganyang bagay, kailangan po nating alamin talaga kung sino-sino ang mga barkada niya para malaman din natin kasi minsan 'di ba mas doon sila nag-o-open as ate minsan as family member or ate kailangan din natin magtanong sa barkada kung kumusta na yung kapatid ko ganyan ganyan kasi karamihan mas nakakaalam ang barkada kaysa sa family pero sa inyo ma'am intact po yung family niyo po ngayon hin um, Broken family po kami. Pero at least maganda yung pakikitungo nyo sa isa't isa sa mga kapatid mo at sa nanay at tatay mo. Opo. Okay po sa, so example ma'am, sa mga like sa 
pagpapatiwakal, ano pong masasabi niyo po dyan? Sa mga, halos kasi na-experience ng mga kabataan ngayon yan. Yung mga gan ganong bagay? Um, kung na-experience naman nila yung ganong bagay, wala na nga, di ba may kasabihan na hindi, hindi naman, kung nangyari na yun, hindi naman talaga, don't end na, there always be a way. Kung nangyari na talaga yun sa'yo, o talagang napasok ka na doon sa problema na yun, ang problema naman lahat may solusyon, di ba? Let us always ask those person na talaga ma mas nakakatulong talaga sa'yo. Kasi minsan, nag-ask tayo ng advice sa mga taong dinadagdagan tuloy yung problema natin. Kung napasok ka na talaga sa ganong bagay sa early marriage or sa early pregnancy, hindi naman ibig sabihin na makakawa... Uh, Tatalik, um, tatalikuran mo yun. Talagang nangyari na yun, ang gagawin mo is the future. You need to find ways na hindi hanggang doon na lang yung future mo. Like example, na early marriage ka, pero bata ka pa, may, may panahon ka naman para mag-aral pa, i-continue mo pa yung future mo. At saka hindi naman talaga sabihin na nangyari na yun, end na yun ang buhay mo, end na yun ang future mo, ng pangarap mo, end na yun. Kailangan magpapatuloy ka pa rin kasi you will be an example of those persons na nang doon. Example, ikaw napasok ka na doon sa relasyon na ay sa problema na ganun, tapos napatuloy ka sa pangarap mo pa rin. Magiging example ka sa mga taong nangyari, nangyari din sa buhay nila ng ganun. Kaya patuloy lang, even though na may mistake, may paghihirap, may nagawa kang mali, There always be a learning on that situation na nangyari sa buhay mo. Okay, salamat po ma at maraming mag salamat po sa word of inspiration kay Ma'am Hel Ma'am Hazel.
international news. Philippine sailors injured as China boards and intercepts PH boats near a Union show. At least eight Philippine Navy sailors sustained injuries when Chinese vessels intercepted a resupply mission to the BRP Sierra Madre on a Union shoal in the West Philippine Sea on Monday. According to ABS-CBN news sources, the China Coast Guard rammed and boarded a rigid hull inflatable boat dispatched by the Philippine Navy, resulting in injuries, including one sailor reportedly losing a finger. China also confiscated high-powered weapons and allegedly damaged one of the ribs. Details on the evacuation of sailors or boats from the area are awaited from the military. The Philippine Department of National Defense and Armed Forces of the Philippines have largely refrained from elaborating on the incident, apart from condemning China's actions. Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro Jr. emphasized that China's actions are hindering peace and stability in the South China Sea. Is Bamban Mayor Alice Go's actual name Waping Go? In Manila, Senator Sherwin Gachalian raised the question on Tuesday. Is Bamban Tarlac Mayor Alice Go's real name Wang Pingo? Gachalian based this query on government documents that suggest Alice Go's may be the same person as Go Waping, who entered the Philippines at the age of 13 on January 4. Who entered the Philippines at the age of 13 on January 12, 2003, with a birth date of August 31, 1990. According to Gachalian, these details were sourced from documents provided by the Board of Investments related to the Go family's application for a special investor's resident visa and records from the Bureau of Immigration where Go Hua Ping's registered mother under SRV is listed as Lin Wen Yi. As of now, there has been no response from Go's camp to these inquiries. Meanwhile, the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission plans to pursue serious and non-bailable criminal charges against Go for her alleged involvement in illegal Philippine offshore gaming operators' activities in her jurisdiction. PAOC spokesperson Winston John Casho mentioned that Go's identity and citizenship are under scrutiny. And the agency has gathered documents showing her involvement with Pogo firms operating without proper permits. International News Alleged Filipino Jadis Apprehended in New York Jude Sanson, a 27-year-old resident of Hollis, Queens, appeared in Queens Criminal Court before Judge Edwin Novillo on Monday, described as a suspected jadis by local media. Sanson was arraigned last Thursday on charges including criminal possession of a weapon following a traffic stop, where police found him heavily armed in the, his 2013 Black Ford Explorer with concealed license plates. According to Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz's office, Sanson possessed loaded a 9mm semi-automatic pistol, ammunition, knives, a mashed, a stun gun, a whip, body armor with an NYPD patch, an MTA vest, and a baton with provocative writings and an Arabic phrase. NYPD Chief of the Perm Department NYPD Chief of Department Jeffrey B. Madre highlighted the danger posed by Sanson's arsenal, emphasizing the importance of police vigilance in ensuring public safety. Sanson, who spent Father's Day in Rakers Island and is held without bail, faces further legal proceedings with a grand jury scheduled to review his case on July 9. Entertainment. Regine Velasquez Alcacid shares tips with Benny during their rehearsal visit. 
Bini, known as the nation's girl group, received a special visit from Asia's songbird, Regine Velasquez Alcacid, during the rehearsal for an upcoming concert. Velasquez Alcacid shared valuable advice with the eight-piece group on vocal exercises, pre-performance diet, and life lessons. Speaking to ABS-CBN News afterwards, Velasquez Alcacid highlighted the importance of enjoying the moment on stage and connecting with the audience. She encouraged Bini to focus on entertaining and letting their energy shine through, emphasizing the reciprocal exchange of energy with their audience during concerts. Velasquez Alcacid also expressed pride in Bini's impact on promoting original Filipino music internationally, reminding them to remain grateful for their opportunities and to stay humble amidst their growing success. Oji Diaz, accompanied by his legal counsel led by attorney Reggie Tongon, along with his showbiz update live co-host Loy Villarama and Rina Lowalhati, submitted their counter affidavits to investigating prosecutor Edward Seho on Tuesday in response to Bay Alonso cyber libel complaint. Tong Ho, speaking to ABS-CBN News after filing, outlined key points from their counter-affidavit. They argued that the alleged defamatory post in question was time-bared as it was posted in November 2022, within the one-year prescriptive period of cyber libel. Additionally, Tong Ho emphasized that their statements were protected under the fair comment doctrine regarding matters of public interest such as the complaints, public life, and work. They also raised an affirmative defense of improper venue, citing Bea Alonso's legal residency in Spain since 2022, implying that she is no longer a resident of Quezon City. Moreover, they filed a counter charge of perjury against Alonso for allegedly falsely claiming residence in Quezon City in her complaint affidavit. Alonzo and her legal team are expected to submit their reply affidavit within the next two weeks. Sports At last, Bong Quinto has become a champion once more. Bata palagyo na yung goal ko. Bong Quinto, after a career marked by near misses in both collegiate and professional basketball, finally clinched championship glory with Meralco in the 2024 PBA Philippine Cup Finals. Starting with his NCAA Season 91 title with Let Run, Quinto's journey included several close calls with Meralco, enduring finals defeats to Barangay Ginebra in 2019 and 2022. Now, ending nearly a decade-long drought, Quinto played a pivotal role as Meralco triumphed over San Miguel Beermen. Reflecting on the win, Quinto expressed gratitude to his teammates and coaches for their collective effort and preparation throughout the season. He emphasized their resilience from a challenging start in the standings to ultimately securing a championship berth, highlighting their unwavering belief in the team's capabilities. Outstanding athletes from NCAA and UAAP honored at Awards Night. The 2024 Collegiate Press Corps Awards Night, sponsored by San Miguel Corporation and held at Discovery Suites, Manila in Pasig, featured the inaugural recognition of standout athletes in women's basketball and men's volleyball. Ken Pastrana from the University of Santo Tomas was celebrated as the first Collegiate Women's Basketball Player of the Year after leading the growling Tigresses to the first title in 17 years. Kevin Cambiao of La Salle was named Collegiate Men's Basketball Player of the Year for steering his team to victory in UAAP Season 86. Owa Retamar of NU and Luby Ramirez of Perpetual received honors as UAAP Men's Volleyball Player of the Year and C and NCAA Men's Volleyball Player of the Year, respectively. The event also acknowledged top coaches, including Heidi Ong, Dante Alinson Surin, Sami Akailar, Normal Miguel, 
and Jerry Yi for their contributions to Collegiate Sports. International Feature Lord of the Rings actor McKellen hospitalized following stage fall. Ian McKellen, the esteemed British actor renowned for his role such as Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, was hospitalized Monday night after a fall from the stage during his performance as John Falstaff in Players Kings at London's Noel Coward Theatre. The 85-year-old actor slipped during a fight scene, prompting his admission to hospital. A spokesperson for the theater assured the public that McKellen underwent a scan and is expected to recover fully and quickly under the care of the NHS. Tuesday's performance was canceled to allow McKellen to rest, with plans for his return to the stage on Wednesday. McKellen, a veteran of stage and screen, with a career spanning six decades, has garnered numerous accolades, including has garnered numerous accolades, including for his portrayal of Magneto in the X-Men films. Cut. National Feature Philippine edition of the card game Coop released. The gaming library has made a significant achievement by securing the rights to produce a Philippine edition of the popular card game Coop. Originally developed by Lamame Games, Coop is recognized as a gateway game, ideal for introducing newcomers to the hobby due to its straightforward setup and rules accommodating two to six players. Set in a realm of political intrigue, players use cards to wield influence and can bluff about their actions. The Philippine edition, overseen by the gaming library founder Hans Kenner Fernandez, reimagines the game within the Spanish colonial era, featuring character art inspired by Noli Mitangere and translated rule books into Filipino. This localized version aims to attract more players to explore the game and the broader board gaming community. <music> Trivia What is the process of fog formation? Fog is a natural weather phenomenon that can reduce visibility to zero, posing hazards on roads and prompting schools to delay start times until it dissipates. Essentially a cloud of the ground, fog consists on ti of tiny water droplets formed when evaporated water cools. The cooling process varies leading to different types of fog formation. Radiation fog, the most common type, occurs when infrared cooling causes warm, moist air to condense rapidly as it meets cooler air during seasonal ch changes or sudden temperature drops after warm humid days advection fog forms when warm air blows over cooler surfaces condensing into fog other types like hail fog and freezing fog occur under specific conditions where water droplets freeze sea smoke another type forms when cool air passes over warm water or moist land ultimately fog forms when there's temperature disparity between the ground and the air alongside sufficient humidity and water vapor. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News Channel to the Yandi Oro. I am asking once more to support and subscribe and turn notifications for more updates and info. A big favor, give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. That way other people can see this and if you know anyone else that might benefit, then share this with them. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.